Uh, our next speaker is, is from one of um, our sort of uh, iconic companies, I, I would say, here uh, in Ann Arbor from Menlo. Uh, and so our next speaker is James Goble of Menlo, who will teach us the Menlo way. And he's a founding partner at Menlo Innovations. He's practiced software product development for more than 20 years as a developer, team lead, system architect, project manager, practice director, and executive coach. So help me welcome James to the stage. Thank you. Good afternoon. <laughs> so Menlo is a service provider. We help other organizations build software, whether that's helping the university build the organ transplant information system, or helping our friends at OptiShot build a golf simulator that you can use inside of your house for several hundred dollars. But I don't really want to talk about what our products are or what we work on. What I want to talk about is imagine for the moment that you were to start a small startup. What would you do? Would you immediately go out and try and get a large office and build cubes? Imagine you and a couple of friends are taking money out of your bank account. You've quit your job. What would you do? How would you start? For most of us, that conversation starts around the dinner table or in the basement, right? There's very few employees because you don't have the money to pay them. So you have to do lots of different jobs. Can you imagine sitting around the dinner table saying, well, this is my side of the table, that's your side of the table, you're in shipping, I'm not gonna help you, right? If you're starting a small company, everybody does everything. And the interesting question becomes, when does an organization shift from everybody is helping everybody else for the common good to I'm doing my job, I sure hope they're doing their job? And how far could you scale that? Could you take a company and have 10 people join you inside of your house, work around that table? How do you have to create greater bureaucracy? How do you have to coordinate those people? And this is a really interesting part of Menlo. Menlo is an experiment that takes that idea of running a small entrepreneurial company and scaling it while keeping it around the dining room table. Because this is so interesting to people, hundreds of organizations, thousands of people come tour Menlo every year. This produces hundreds of thousands of dollars in revenue. We normally charge for the tour that if you come visit us today, you can have for free. 100 people working in a space. So we've scaled all the way down from four founders up to 85 people at our max working on projects. Since we're a service company, we adjust back and forth. Right now, we're about 50 to 60 people working on projects. But we work with some very large companies that then mimic the behaviors we do, and they try and bring into their organizations those same things for companies who have 10,000 people in their IT department. So what would you do when you go back, many of you have jobs, many of you work on teams and some projects, even if you're a student. What would you do to maximize the productivity inside of your team if you weren't worried about your performance? If you're around that table, around the kitchen table, and there's six of you, and you're trying to coordinate with somebody, do you send them email? Or do you swap seats with somebody else and go sit next to them so that you can work most closely physically with the person whom you're collaborating with. Does that seem logical and simple? A lot easier than putting in infrastructure for sending email. That's what we do at Menlo. We take very simple, obvious things that everybody's heard of, and we continue to do them at scale. The challenge I want to offer you, can you do that in your own work environment? Can you do that in your personal lives? What if you looked at the organization as a whole, whether it be your family planning a vacation or whether it's your work environment, what if you focused as much energy on helping others inside your organization achieve your mission as you did on trying to make sure your stuff was done? Or even more so, you focused on those people being able to do what they want because they need to get the work done that's really for the whole of the group. So Menlo is a software company that's sort of nicknamed, people throw a lot of interesting names at us. I think they're intended to hurt our feelings, like the Amish of programmers. <laughs> Imagine doing a large software project like the factory flow cytometer, a scientific instrument. We had people work on that for over 10 years. We managed a multi-million dollar software project for FDA medical device 
using index cards we pin to the wall. We know how to use software solutions, but what we find is that when people actually organize a project on index cards, guess what? They talk to each other. We call this high-speed voice technology. <laughs> we find that when somebody's using high-speed voice technology and they're sarcastic to somebody else, it can be easily detected by looking at the eyebrows. <laughs> how many times have you seen somebody send an email meaning it to be a joke and lighting a fire whether it be at home or at work, and they didn't intend to, and you waste all this energy. This used to be my life inside of a large company. 20% of my time as a director at Commerce One was putting out fires from somebody who didn't mean to light it by writing something just not quite the right tone in an email. What if we spent more time together doing work together, building relationships? Menlo is as some people put it, an experiment in how far can you push this in a working community. And so if you're going to work on something with somebody else, you literally pick up your stuff, you go move, and you go sit at that table. Matter of fact, you don't actually have a table or a computer. Projects have tables and computers. So if you're working on a project, you go to that project. If you're going to help somebody on another project, you don't send them email. You stand up, you walk over to the other end of the room. We have a 28,000 square foot room filled with people doing work. And you talk to them and engage with them and build relationships with them. And the whole time we're looking at project plans that are on the wall where the status is expressed by small circular dots that you walk over and put a little green dot on something to say it's done. Right? Anybody ever remember in kindergarten getting little gold stars? Turns out we're that same kindergartner which is taller and more pretentious now. How many of you have ever spent a week working on a project or a week at work and somebody says, what'd you get done this week? And you go, I don't know. It's kind of a hollow feeling. What if instead, every time you got something done, you could celebrate it and everybody would see it because it's one big open room, you put a dot on the wall and everybody celebrates the fact that we got something done together because we're gonna show all that work to our customer once a week in what we call show and tell. Turns out all the skills you learned in kindergarten are actually really useful for getting multi-million dollar medical devices done or the organ transplant information system for the university hospital that will track every organ recipient for the rest of their lives. The stuff we work on is often very important and sometimes it's just fun, like the golf simulator or the scoring system for dog shows. But ultimately, every one of these projects matters to the people whose lives depend on it because it's their income or it's the thing that they do for fun or for the person who's been spending their entire life with this dog teaching it to run through an obstacle course, they'd like to be able to go back and see all the accomplishments they've had with this dog because it's a relationship. Ultimately, Menlo is a great experiment on how can we use technology to improve relationships between customers and companies and the people who work on projects. And I certainly invite you to come visit us. Thank you. So, uh, B. Waters wants to know, how's conflict resolution handled? Any built-in process? So, we believe that conflict is important. We actually encourage productive conflict. It's when people are super polite and don't get the things on the table that it tends to boil over. So, we have conflict because we have humans. There are people who don't get along. If you don't get along, we do this weird thing. We make you work together. Now, we rotate people. So every week you get to work with different people and everybody else on the project is equally responsible for all the work. So those people are gonna sit there, your peers are gonna guide you. Your peers are gonna help you. And why do you care what your peers think? Well, at Menlo, the whole system's kind of woven together about this, we're on the same team. Your peers decide who gets the promotion. Everybody at Menlo knows what everybody else makes. It's posted on the wall. So there's no dispute about salary, and if you think somebody else really is doing a good job helping your peers get through difficult times, that's somebody you want on the team. You're gonna advocate that that person gets a raise and should get a promotion. And so it's very much about building a community where people are worried about each other, and all of us have emotional reactions, and sometimes that's the root of the conflict, in which case you want the people who care about you to help guide you through that conflict in a productive way where you end up building a better and stronger relationship with the person you're fighting with. Hopefully that helps. Thanks.